Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for September 3rd, 2022, could on 1230 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including wild storms that could be threatening portions of Bermuda over the next couple of days. We could have two hurricanes out there next week, so let's go and jump straight into everything. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we noticed that we have a few things occurring today. First of all, from starting from left to right, we have Tropical Storm Earl newly designated out here in the western part of the Atlantic Basin. This is a couple hundred miles to the northeast of Puerto Rico and is expected to continue heading northwest over the next several days. And then we have Tropical Storm Danielle once was a hurricane and will likely re-strengthen into a hurricane if not there already. And we have more tropical waves coming off the coast of Africa. We could be expecting a pretty busy late part of July or I'm sorry, late part of September or potentially even into October. So we look here at Tropical Storm Earl. Again, right now, sustained winds are 35 knots, 40 miles per hour with a pressure of 1,003 millibars moving towards the northwest at 13 miles per hour. We also have Tropical Storm Danielle out there, 60 knots or 70 miles per hour moving towards the west-northwest at 2 miles per hour, pressure down to 990 millibars. Take a look here at the visible satellite imagery for Tropical Storm Earl. We noticed that today, again, We've had a partially exposed low-level circulation. We could see it in the early morning frames here. Notice this exposed low-level circulation, devoid of much in the way of shower and thunderstorm activity. However, that has certainly changed. Uh, we can notice that, again, there was a little bit of a pause there in thunderstorm activity, and then we've got this big blow-up of convection that has moved over the uh, exposed circulation and has now covered that and um, you can kind of see that it's trying to expand westward and this will happen from time to time you get these pulses of convective activity they'll blow up and then uh, after some time this low, low, low level circulation will begin to outrace this convection because of the shear we also notice that there is some dry air in the environment still notice these outflow boundaries here indicating the presence of some very dry air across the area right now we look at the recon plane that was in there from earlier this morning. We noticed that, again, the recon in the sense aircraft was finding pressures of around 1,004 to 1,005 millibars. And this was when the convective activity was at a minimum. So we should see that pressures <clears throat> may have indeed fallen just a little bit uh, now down into the low 1,000 um, millibar range. We're probably somewhere about 1,002 to 1,003 millibars. And we notice that there is still some tropical storm force winds on the northern side here as to be expected. This is somewhat enhanced also by the trade winds. So this is as to be expected. We've got the potential for some tropical storm force winds on the northern side and very light in the way in southern and westerly winds at this point. If you look at the track forecast here for tropical storm Earl, we notice that again, this is expected to continue moving towards the northwest over the next several days. And then eventually we'll be making that turn towards the north and eventually off towards the north and east here at the end of the forecast period. Intensity is expected to be kept at a minimum for now. We notice that in the 12 hour window, we see a peak intensity here of 45 miles per hour. And that's likely probably going to be within the next couple of hours that we hit that uh, intensity. And then we can see here after about two days at hour 48, we start to pick up 50 miles per hour. And at the end here, the 120 hour period, we are at 70 miles per hour as this is a storm to the south of Bermuda. Now, this could be a potential threat for Bermuda over the next several days because there is still a wide range of possibilities in terms of what could actually happen here. So if we take a look here at the GFS forecast, this is the 12Z run here, the 850 millibar vorticity or the spin in the atmosphere at 5,000 feet off the ground. We notice that here is Tropical Storm Earl in the model forecast today. This is uh, Danielle over here. And what we notice is that for the next several days, again, Earl remains pretty weak, but then begins to intensify and moves towards the north and east here. Well, we do have this upper level low here, and we can show this in the 500 millibar height anomalies at this point. We've got an upper level low that is forming towards the kind of the north northwest here of the system and this actually might try to interact with Earl here and tug it more towards the west just a little bit and you can actually see in the model forecast it actually uh, does do so it gets picked up and kind of makes that more of a northwest turn 
So where exactly Dan or where exactly Earl is within this time frame is going to matter because even if it is centered maybe a little bit slower and back towards the south and west, this may indicate a potential track very close to Bermuda. And this is actually shown in the European forecast here. Again, this is the zero Z run of the Euro. We notice that the Euro keeps it pretty weak for several days and then does intensify it. Uh, it has it a little bit weaker here, but we notice that again, it does become a hurricane up in the north there and then makes that kind of bend very close to the island of Bermuda. And we can see that again, the 500 millibar height anomalies here. Again, generally speaking, this is actually in part because we have a ridge to the north here, basically just trying to steer the storm towards the west. And then eventually we can see here, it uh, ends up weakening as we get another trough to approach here and tries to carry this on out to sea here. So we'll have to see because this still could get pretty close to portions, maybe even as close as uh, Newfoundland and the Canadian Maritimes up here. This would still be several hundred miles to the south of these areas, but it is still something to monitor. Again, mainly for the island of Bermuda, there is a threat now, a, a tangible threat. And if we actually look here at the 06Z European ensembles out to hour 144, this is kind of what we were talking about, that again, we have a general lack of understanding to where Earl is going to go. And it still remains a complicated forecast because we notice that there are some members out here that are a little bit quicker and a little bit stronger here. Uh, this would be valid uh, for 144 hours from now. So this is valid as of Friday of this upcoming week and we have a storm that could be well to the south and east of Bermuda and well on its way out to sea or there is still a cluster of members here and growing cluster actually of members that are further towards the southwest at this point on the European ensembles and get generally steered a lot closer to the island of Bermuda. So there's still some uncertainty here but I would definitely be on guard here for the island of Bermuda to monitor the progress of the system certainly um, I'm more so inclined now to rule out the possibility that this tries to sneak all the way westward into uh, the Turks and Caicos Bahamas. So I'm going to say this is an all clear. And I think generally for Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, and even North Carolina, I would rule out an all clear here, at least for the time being. Um, the, the further north you get, there is at least some potential that if our storm does something wonky, but again, generally speaking, the island of Bermuda is at the most risk, at least in the immediate range um, at this particular moment. So just something to kind of keep in mind. And of course, I'll have another update uh, on this particular storm later this afternoon. Now, we're also watching another storm out there. We've got Tropical Storm Danielle. This is sitting... Uh, just about 925 miles to the west of the Azor Islands at this point. You can see here's our storm position today. Still a tropical storm, sustained winds of 70 miles per hour, but it is intensifying and is likely to regain hurricane intensity uh, sometime later today. We can see here that this is expected to continue moving towards the north and northeast here, eventually making much more of a sharper bend here sometime by Monday. And then as this begins to lift northward here, it goes into the cooler sea surface temperatures. And sometime by about the next 96 to 120 hours, this is by Thursday. So by Wednesday or Thursday, we're having a storm that is weakening at this point. And by Thursday of next week, this should be a remnant uh, circulation, a post-tropical low as it merges with an extra tropical cyclone to its north. So we can kind of see here, on the visible satellite imagery, again, we notice that we are still dealing with some dry air entrainments. This is because this is such high in the mid latitudes at this point. But generally speaking, we notice that, again, we've got these rotating convective bursts and even some hints of eye clearing here. So this actually could be theoretically stronger than 70 miles per hour. And I do think it is uh, probably a hurricane by now. Uh, obviously, hard to tell without recon. But we also notice that if we jump out here to the expanded view here, we notice that outflow is once again able to expand and this is indicative of healthy uh, outflow patterns in the upper levels of the atmosphere and certainly more potential energy for our storm to gain. If you take a real quick look here at the ECM, or not the ECM, but the H4 forecast here, we'll go back to the 6E run and we notice that again, pressures were down in the low 980s 
and uh, it could get down into the 970s and potentially uh, become a pretty potent hurricane here. Uh, this indicates a kind of a peak around 75, 80 knots before we start to weaken this into an extra tropical low sometime uh, by Thursday. This is at the point where this is becoming an extra tropical low. So we have a lot to talk about over the next several days. Um, certainly Danielle is no threat right now to land, but we'll continue to monitor the progress here of Earl. And of course, I'll have another video update out on Earl later today. All right. That being said, I hope you have a great day of your afternoon. Of course, I am Michael Romali. I'll be talking to you guys again some more tomorrow.